Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. If you have been following my channel, then you know that I am a subscriber to the Warhammer 40,000 Conquest Partworks magazine. And I've been doing a series of videos where I open each issue, look at the contents, and talk about how um, it introduces people to the Games Workshop world and, and the ho hobby gaming in general. Um, I'm quite keen on, on looking at ways to get people into hobby gaming um, in terms of um, dealing with assembly and painting and playing and all those sort of things and Warhammer 40,000 Conquest is a great way of doing it but if you don't want to subscribe to Warhammer 40,000 Conquest there are other ways to get involved um, and Games Workshop uh, in recent years have been doing a lot to make the hobby as accessible as possible so I thought um, sort of as a counterpoint to my Warhammer 40,000 Conquest coverage that um, I would take a quick look at some of the things that um, Games Workshop offer that provide an in to the hobby. Um, now obviously the first thing, the most obvious thing, is the First Strike Starter Set. I have done a lot of coverage on the First Strike Starter Set um, uh, and you can find my videos on, on my channel. So I won't go into a huge amount of detail here, but First Strike is the, the basic small entry level um, way to get into the game and it's pretty much pitched at sort of small gift price. It's £25 for the starter set. Now, that's not a full game experience in itself, but it is a really good starting point because um, you get four units of miniatures, you get a, a unit of three intercessors, a unit of three reavers, which are the, the ultramarines or the space marines, and then you get a unit of three death guard, which are the Nurgle space marines, and then you get a unit of, um, I think, I think it's six. I think it's six poxwalkers, which are kind of like sort of infested zombie type creatures. And um, alongside that, you get um, a really cool series of, of introductory um, scenarios to play through, uh, which introduces you to the rules step by step. You also get uh, a small play paper play mat, so you've got something you can put on the table, and the box itself turns into a piece of terrain. Um, you get the full basic rules included um, and it's a really good way to get started in the game because it's not too much, it's not too heavy um, and it omits certain things because there's no hero characters you don't have to worry about the special rules for heroes and there's no psychers so you don't have to worry about the psychic phase so it's, it provides a sort of streamlined introduction to the game and it's like I say it's £25 um, and it's everything you need to get started the other thing to note is that the miniatures are push fit, which means you do not need glue. Um, I do recommend you glue them, um, just because you, you know why not. But you don't need to, to, to have any glue to put them together, which means in terms of the tools you need for assembling the miniatures, because you do still need to assemble the miniatures. Which, by the way, um, I should point out, are also um, they're in coloured plastic, so the Ultramarines are in blue and the Death Guard are in green. So you don't even really need to worry about paint straight away. But um, you will need one tool, and that is you will need some side cutters to clip the miniatures out of the frames. Once they're out of the frames, you can just push them together and you're ready to go to the table. Um, side cutters, um, it, it, it is, and that's what you want to look for if you're, if you're shopping online or whatever, type in side cutters. Games Workshop make their own side cutters, which are £20. You do not need to pay £20 for a pair of side cutters. Um, Army Painter make a pair which are about £9, £10. But you can go to somewhere, at any hobby store, and you can pick them up for two, three pounds. And that is all you will need to get those uh, miniatures out of the frames, and then you can push them together. If you're going to get some glue as well, and like I say, I recommend you do, you want to get plastic glue. Citadel, uh, Games Workshop do Citadel plastic glue, but again, there are other alternatives. Revel, um, any hobby company will make plastic glue. Plastic glue actually slightly melts the plastic to form a, a stronger bond. Um, and it's you know less less scary than dealing with super glue, especially for younger children. You don't really want younger children messing around with super glue too much. Obviously, young children you want to supervise them when they're doing any of this sort of stuff. Anyway, that should go without saying. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, that's first strike. It's a really good introduction, but it is just an introduction. You will need um, something more eventually. But it's enough so that you can sort of get a, get a feel for assembling miniatures. Um, and then playing a few simple games and learning whether you want to explore a little bit more of the uh, of the Games Workshop universe. 
if you do, the, the next setup they do, because Games Workshop have actually created three different starter sets for Warhammer 40,000. You've got First Strike, you've got No No Fear, and you've got Dark Imperium, which is the, the big daddy set that has everything in it. Um, no No Fear is the is the, the mid-tier product, and it's a really good next step from First Strike. Because you get a bit more of everything. It's £50 at retail, you can get it less online. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, you get um, a, a, a lot more fluff, a, a, a nicer book. Um, you get extra units. Um, you get a vehicle, um, you get a blight drone, you get some flying um, ultramarines, you get some inceptors, um, you get death guard again, pox walkers again, intercessors again. You also get um, a unit of hell blasters, um, which uh, are special weapon marines, and then you get two leaders as well. You get a leader for the death guard, and you get a leader for the ultramarines. So it introduces vehicles, flying, um, special characters. Um, but there's still no Psyker in that set, but so you still don't have to worry about the Psychic phase yet. But you're getting all the rules. Again, you get a paper play mat, you get a bigger paper play mat, and the, again, the box converts into a building. If you combine that with First Strike, you've got like a really good si uh, sized unit of Poxwalkers, you've got loads of Death Guard. Um, there's no Reavers in No No Fear, so if you've got First Strike, then you get a little unit of Reavers to add in. Um, and that is enough to be getting on with. And that's, you know, you can get decent sized battles going with that. Um, and again, you've got everything in there. You've got dice, you've got measuring sticks, you've got all the, um, the unit rules. It's a really good next step. And once you've got through No No Fear, you're pretty much playing the game. You're, you're in. And... If you want to go on from there, then you can either buy the um, the Warhammer 40,000 hardback rulebook separately, um, and then you might want to think about buying codexes for for the, the armies you want to play, and things like that. But First Strike and No No Fear are pretty much a, a great way to start getting into the game. That's for gameplay. Um, and then there's other things you need to think about if you're going to get into hobby gaming. Um, the other thing to note is that No No Fear... Um, requires glue so if you bought first strike and you've got your side cutters and you've pushed together the miniatures because they were push fit for no no fear you do need to start thinking about glue and that's when you will need some plastic glue so it's um, introducing you to the next level of complication in terms of assembly as well and if you get through that and you can deal with all that then you're away so that's that's kind of introducing you to the game system. I, I, First Strike is a great place to start. No No Fear is equally good, um, but y you're kind of taking a step a step up in the hobby side of things because they're not push fit miniatures. Talking of hobby, um, painting is obviously a big a big thing with um, Games Workshop and One Forty Thousand. And where do you start? I mean, you can look online. You can see painting guides which have. 20 30 paints listed for for painting a single miniature and that can seem massively daunting but games workshop do do some paint sets that um make it a little bit easier to in introduce to one of conquest magazine has been gradually introducing paints and escalating up the, the painting guides to deal with different aspects of painting and it's been a really good way to get involved in painting but um, another way is to buy some paint sets that are tailored to what you're collecting um, if you have First Strike and No No Fear, then you basically have armies for Death Guard and Ultramarines, and it just so happens that Games Workshop produce paint sets for Death Guard and Ultramarines. Um, the Death Guard paint set is actually, um, at the time of uh, recording this, it's a pre-order. It comes out this weekend, I believe. Um, but the Death Guard paint set is a good, um, a good, a good introduction to painting. And by the way, I should point out that the pictures that I'm putting up here, um, I don't own these. These have all been lifted from Games Workshop's um, web store or other sources. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't own the copyright to these images. All that sort of stuff. Um, but here we go. This is the uh, the Death Guard paint set, and um, you will see that you get a uh, a set of the Easy Build Death Guard Marines that came with First Strike. So if you've gone from First Strike. Um, and now you're looking to paint, it's quite good because you get an extra three marines. Um, or if you've gone from straight from No No Fear, you get an extra three marines that way. Um, it comes with a brush. Um, it's only a starter brush, but that's all you need to start with. There are many different types of brushes, um, but you can you can 
learn about those and pick those up as you go. Um, and you get six pots of paint, and most of these pots of paint are the ones that have been coming with um, Warhammer 40,000 Conquest magazine. Uh, the paints in question are um, Agrax Earthshade, which is actually a wash, and it's a really useful wash. Um, it knocks down the colours, um, highlights, uh, highlights, provides definition by adding shade, um, and it just makes makes models pop and, and makes them look less cartoony. It's a really good product um, and well worth having. Uh, Balthazar Gold for detailing. You've got Death Guard Green, obviously, for the armour. Lead Belcher for the metal details and the guns. Rakarth Flesh for the bone and things like that. And then you get a type of paint that um, is it's a texture paint called Armageddon Dust, which is just for adding to the bases. And um, with those paints, you can get a really good decent look to the to the miniatures and actually it's a, a paint scheme that uh, I prefer slightly to the one that um, they're currently teaching people how to do in Warhammer 40,000 Conquest magazine. So that is a really nice way to um, to start getting into painting and it's a good deal it's £20. Um, the unit of three Death Guard is £10 on its own um, and then the paints, um, base paints are usually about 255 although some of them um, if they're, they've got a really dense pigment or a little bit more. Agrax Earthshade is a little bit more again. Um, so so you're getting, you're getting a, a pretty good deal on, on the paints, especially if you get an online discount. Um, and that will give you pretty much what you need to be painting um, the, the, the Death Guard Space Marines. If you want to paint your intercessors, there's also a paint set for those, and it comes with a, a unit of, of three intercessors, um, the easy build intercessors, and again, you get six pots of paint. There is some duplication across the two sets, um, but there's also some difference, some different paints in here. Um, you Agrax Earthshade again, don't worry about getting that twice because you will use it. Um, Armageddon Dust again, um, obviously because of the texture paint, the paint for the base. And then you get Balthazar Gold, McCrack Blue, Abaddon Black and Bugman's Glow. Abaddon Black is uh, uh, is useful for everything. Um, Bugman's Glow is actually quite useful for, for painting Death Guard 2 because you can use it on tentacles and gribbly bits. Um, so it's good if you have that. You get a, you do get some crossover, um, but it's it's another good set. Um, and of course, if you're only going to paint one of the armies, if you're giving the other army to somebody else to paint, um, then you only need to worry about getting one of these paint sets anyway. But that's a pretty decent way to to get started, and you get um, a set of paints which are, are good good base paints for those particular armies, and will get you going. Um, and then you can look at gradually building your paint set from from there. Um, it is definitely not a situation. You don't don't go online and look at um, some Golden Demon Award winning painter who is using 300 paints on a miniature and go, well, this is going to cost me hundreds and hundreds of pounds just to get the paints I need. You don't have to do that. This the you can get one of these paint sets and get going, and you will get tabletop quality miniatures at the end of it. Yes, they're not going to be Golden Demon Demon Award winning. They are not going to be absolutely perfect and immaculate. Um, but you shouldn't you shouldn't really be worrying about that at this stage. If if you want to get interested in painting, start at the beginning and just focus on clean, simple paint jobs that make the miniatures pop on the tabletop and 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 be something that you can be proud of and say I've done this. I did this myself. This is something I have created. And then if you want to get further into painting, then then you do that gradually. Don't don't jump in feet first by the 300 pound games workshop all in paint set that they do sometimes um it's probably a lot more than 300 pounds and it's the if you to buy every every games workshop paint is it's a huge amount of money but not necessary um but yeah so th those those are good paint sets and like i say 20 pounds uh, a piece retail now that pretty much covers you getting into the game um it covers you for basic armies to get started um one thing you won't have at this point is a lot in the way of terrain. You'll have a paper mat and a couple of boxes that you've flipped upside down from First Strike and No No Fear. Um, and terrain is really important to um, to to one forty thousand. It really does make the difference between a, a quite a bland game and something that really opens up tactical uh, strategic options. And yeah, and and but knowing what to get is a little bit tricky. 
and buying individual bits it can be expensive um, but recently someone pointed out to me and um, one, one of my subscribers uh, pointed out to me um, this there's a kill team box set a kill zone sector munitorum and that is actually an incredible deal just for getting scenery because um, I knew about the, 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 the set but I didn't really appreciate everything that was in it so um, this is it's actually a set that was specifically put together from various different kits that already exist and um, bundled together at a discount price so that people who play one four thousand kill zone have everything they need to create a kill zone but of course even if you don't play kill zone it's it's a good set for um, for beginners getting in, into tabletop gaming um, because you get a lot of plastic scenery and you also get a heavy um, play play mat a game board it's a folding game board measuring 22 inches by 30 inches now that's not obviously a full size for for massive battles but at the stage you're at if you've got if you've just got no no fear um, 22 by 30 inches is actually a pretty decent skirmish size for for those sort of level of games anyway um, so it's a good start but even without that game board the terrain in this set is a good deal because what you're getting you're getting two sets of the uh, armored containers and you're also getting a set of the uh, galvanic servo haulers um, now uh, the armored crate sets um, you, they, they retail for 20 pounds a set I believe and um, you normally get or is it 30 pounds a set um, uh, it is no, it is. It's it's thirty pounds a set. So it's thirty pounds, and and each um, set gets you three of the armored containers, um, and then you get uh, nine barrels, um, which are good scatter terrain, and then you get some supply crates as well. Uh, Twelve, I believe. So, and you get two sets of that in this in this box set. So that's sixty pounds worth of terrain right there, and it's a good mix because the armored crates are big. Um, so they're, they're good for blocking line of sight um, and you can you can build them so they're open as well so you can go inside them um, you can stack them on top of each other for additional height um, it's a good good versatile terrain piece the barrels and things like that you can you can use them as scatter on the tabletop um, and also with the with the uh, the ammo crates as well but you can also use them as objectives if you need to um, and then you also get the galvanic servo haulers, which is normally uh, those those retail on their own for twenty five pounds. Um, so that's eighty five pounds worth of terrain. And the galvanic servo haulers are cool because there's like a big crane, um, which adds some interest on the battlefield. And you can actually sort of think about introducing little rules and stuff for for using the crane. Um, and then there's two vehicles that are like um, with uh, caterpillar tracks. They're they're for um, they're basically like um, dock worker machinery um, and so you get quite an interesting mix of, of terrain there and like I say that's normally comes out at 85 pounds but the kill zone uh, box set is 50 pounds and obviously you can get that for less online um, with, the, with the discount so again you're, you're getting a, a a board that's suitable for your skirmish level battles and plenty of terrain so that's a really good way to to kind of instantly fill your tabletop but of course, you don't have to if you don't want to. You don't have to buy a load of terrain straight away. Um, when I first started um, tabletop gaming, I did, did all sorts of things. Like I'd stack a couple of books under a green piece of cloth, and that would be a hill. Um, and I, I glued tin foil onto, onto thin bits of card to make rivers. Um, I used lollipop sticks to make fences. Uh, you, you, any, anything and everything, really. But um, if you want to go for you know nice quality uh, official terrain merchandise this is a really good set there are other kill zones as well um but i think that the the munitorum set because it's um cranes and vehicles and barrels and uh containers and stacking they work for a range of you know pretty much any any situation really you can use them to represent warehouses and docks and space stations and cargo holds it's 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 a good versatile mix that's gonna gonna cover you for quite a while but anyway so um that's that's kind of good ways to get into sort of different aspects of of playing the game um painting your miniatures and building your battlefield um 
there are other ways to do it. Um, these are just a few of the products. Um, I really recommend, um, if, you, if you are interested in, in getting into Warhammer 40,000, take a little look at the various different products available because Games Workshop have been making massive strides to make every aspect of the hobby as accessible as possible. Um, and and like I say, the First Strike and No No Fear are really good introductory sets. And there's lots of different ways to get in and get get the paints you need and the, the terrain you need. Um, some of the bundles they do really do offer a massive saving um, and it's and it's a good to look around and if you have any comments or, or, or queries or you're interested and you want to know more do drop me a comment um, below and I, I do my best to answer any questions I get um, I am not the font of all knowledge when it comes to Warhammer 40k but I will absolutely do my best to, to help and point you in the right direction um, and I guess yeah, this is just it was just just a I was going to say quick. It wasn't quick. I've been going on for quite a long time, but I just wanted to to sort of do a counterpoint to the one hundred forty thousand conquest coverage that I've been doing, um, which I do think represents a fantastic way to get into the hobby and to build two massive armies of Death Guard and Ultramarines. Um, if you haven't been following my footage, uh, my coverage of that particular series of magazines, do please consider subscribing because um, I get four magazines a month and um, yeah, I'll go through them in quite a lot of detail um, and talk about the pros and cons of them. Um, but yeah, this is this is an alternative way. If, you, if, you, if you're not really sure where to go about getting into 140k, these are good products um, for various reasons to get you started. Not the only products available, but products that um, caught my eyes being, uh, being good for what they do. Like I say, any questions, please leave them below. And until next time, I'll say bye-bye for now, everybody. Bye-bye.